Welcome. We are into, I think, day 30-something, uh, looking at Grasshopper 2. And if you know what I've been doing, I've been plugging through the params, uh, having a lot of fun in the maths, and kind of stopping after the functions, because getting it and the trig, but getting into the random and statistics uh, and the complex is a little deeper than I want to go, a little more physics-oriented than I want to go right now, and a little more um, algebraic than I want to go, I guess you could say. But I do want to start doing things with what I've done. So as I'm in here and I've made uh, basic curves that can be informed, uh, you can see that I can swap out the functions. I can do some very cool functions with uh, uh, this one's actually 1 over sine, uh, which has got some variable values here, which is pretty fun to what you might want to do to generate curves. And as I was doing that, I was just kind of plugging through all of the essential ones that were here that kind of showed you from arguments what you could create. And people are getting pretty familiar with that, but you will have to go back into what Grasshopper is all about, which I think is an understanding of data trees. So I took my information and I thought, okay, well, let's just grab one of these out uh, of one of these scripts and let's start to try and build a tree. And I thought, like, where is the where's the tree section in data that has the merge components? Like, where's the merge component? How can I make things complex like that? And I realized you don't do it that way, or at least I can't find out how to do it that way. And it's kind of clumsy anyhow. So I played around a lot here thinking about what is an item from index, thinking about the path mapper, thinking about how I used to grow things in scripting by scripting by shifting lists and relative items and all those things that are people might have gone deeper in intermediate level grasshopper stuff. And it gets kind of funky, but I think David Rutten has really simplified things. So list from items, I started to hit a wall because obviously the tree or the, or the path wanted a list of integers. So I was thinking, well, let's go into a number series to generate those things. Um, well, that, that can work, but then all of a sudden you're hit with this kind of uh, from what they refer to as twigs, which are branches, <laughs> items, I guess, as elements, um, paths, and then sites. Uh, I kind of hit a wall, and and then I and then things looked a little familiar in uh, the filter node here. Like as I started to look at things here, the weaving, what used to be dispatch, uh, shifting, combining, pick and mix, pick and omit. Okay, so they're kind of familiar, but I really was having trouble with how am I going to wrap my head around list. Uh, items, lists, and lists of lists, or data trees. Um, so list statistics was there. Really nice, good control of lists, kind of like how you learn popping and appending lists in Python or C or whatever it is. Um, insert into list, repeat, stack items, all these kind of physical things to do the lips. But then it really started to throw me, like, why do I want to get into the tuples or the tuples, however you say them, um, of Python, which is where I think of those coming from. And of course, they're using words and all these basic things like apricots and dewberry. I'm like, holy cow, what is going on? They get these little fruit icons. I'm like, no. So I went off to school and I was like, okay, let's go back and start over to understand this. So I took all that and kind of hit a wall. So I figured, well, let's go into here and just start with how I would have done it um, with the old system, I would look at lists, I would look at, look at trees, and I'm slowly starting to understand what metadata is really do. It allows you a way of uh, really um, building, I guess, what would be more similar to dictionaries or pairing information up or making sense or making code readable. So I will get into meta, but right now I wanted to understand trees. Um, I wanted to understand paths, sites. Uh, tree topology, um, and definitely I wanted to do things with lists. And you can see at the bottom here, you get these great uh, tuples and dissolving tuples and grow tuples and pair tuples. And I think my head is starting to settle for that. But let's look at this little diagram, which is where so many people started in the old grasshopper path, uh, you know, understanding data trees. So I went in here, I took a range, and I just felt, okay, let's throw it through a point. We have a list. We should be able to have a list item that generates these points, and I can slide through and make those lists jump. Now I got to give them the color to do that, so we'll just give them a green. Um, and I think I'll be able to. Uh, why is that not coming up? I've got my points, my original ten points along the bottom. Um, it should be showing my green as I run through them, and that item index should be popping out. Uh, the different points as I go along. And I think they should be sliding along here, but for some reason it's not 
I don't know why it's not giving me my visibility of my curves on there. Maybe I'm just not thinking correctly. But needless to say, I was like, okay, what is this complex area of creating metadata? You take a name, you take some, you take some points, and then you can start putting in words like comment before. There's all these strange things in here to actually uh, uh, go in and choose a display, but you can use Rhino commands, which kind of reminds me of what was happening in uh hopping hopping up rhino so that was kind of weird so i put that in, and then you get these names like rhino.name i'm not really understanding why i want to go back to rhino with all this data i'm sure it's particular the architecture and other forms but it's starting to make a little bit of sense what i wanted to do is just show this was a point list um so let me just uh let me just take that and make it disabled okay everything's disabled if i do that and visible if i just get rid of those points i think it should get rid of them but um just curious sometimes restarting this stuff helps i'm just gonna disconnect that i've got my points uh it's one point it should be listed very gently at two so zero one two this one should be coming up a nice color but for some reason it's defaulting out not giving me the color on that maybe because something else is uh over uh over that because of my iteration and i'll show you what i'm talking about like so if I have that, basically I could slide through that list item and move from here to here. I guess I could shut down everything else afterwards, but I'm not going to bother. So I basically went down here and said, well, let's, let's uh, so, okay, assign Rhino name, metadata coming from that. How would I dissect that? What is meta from index? So I avoided meta initially. So let's just move these and let's move them in a range. And there you go. You see the range of those moving up and I have a tree. So very familiar my wires go from single item to list items to tree items. And so I have a tree that is recording some wonderful things. It looks very familiar to how you used to script in the squiggly brackets with the semicolons between them. And I'm able to take that tree at an index of that tree, and you can see the visualization in red, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way up. So that's nice. The blue information is saying let's take that tree and let's generate a path Paths can be generated by the paths from elements. And you have to literally type in here, similar to how you were using the shift lists and the relative items or whatever, the path map or however you were scripting. So it's actually made fairly simple. And then you're and then you can bring up that data as well. So here I could type in to hard code in here too, or I could make a way to script these digits into the elements or make them parametric. But right now, if I just went in and I just changed that to say eight you're going to see that that's going to jump the blue up to the eighth column here. So you are starting to use the list from paths. We're jumping in here, trying to get everything up and running. And you'll find that that really is contained within the tree. So um, at least I believe it was. Okay, list, uh, list, da, 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 da. where is this? Uh, tree length, tree statistics, trim, tree transfer, all trees, site from offset. Where did I find my list from paths? Um, oh, over here in the filter, the initial one. Yeah, item from, uh, you want to get into the habit and understanding what item from index is. Meta you could avoid for a little bit. List from index, list from paths, items from sites, and then back into the meta of the site. And then these should look familiar like I was talking up above. And then you can get into the calling and uh, data, which people use so often in geometry. So this is really an understanding of what data trees are and how to get them running. I like all tree sites because you can grab it and it will just grab those and give you the elements at the end of those sites. So I can go in here and grab that one and kind of pick down through here. I'm not sure how long that data is going to go, but it's going to be pretty long because it's going to involve everything. And you're starting to see that familiar notation of how to write and, and follow your paths and kind of find your data on trees. And I think this is neatened up and there's less room for multiple ways of doing things. I almost feel like the first Grasshopper one was obviously David Rutten's plugin, and now he's had a chance to come back and simplify it. So here's the path you have the tree, and you just want to go to that path. So instead of inputting this, you can go in there and you can swap out these paths, and you see that this one's changing, and I'm changing the number of that path as I go through. And you could you could go in here and find other ways to get into the second uh, to the ABC of what's going on within what used to be the path mapper. And then the path you could look back at the elements, and the elements match. What would be here if this was set to 8, you see it would go back to the data 008, which is 008 here. And then the last one I was kind of playing around with um, was site from uh, uh, back into trees and site from path, even though you get site from index, site from offsets, 
replacing items. And there's actually a really nice correlation, in my opinion, to what you're doing with paths as to what you'd be doing with lists. So I can kind of understand this. There's a wonderful order tools, which makes sorting amazing. Got to get into the meta. And then the inspecting analysis I haven't got into yet, but that's kind of like what I would think about is, you know, check for uh, like cleaning trees and making things work. So site's pretty cool. You can go back in here and you get the specifics. And now that's nice because you can set your number to your path, which is eight, or you can set your number to whatever you want. And then you can set your index number to whatever you want. You really have control to kind of cherry pick exactly what you want within data trees. So I'm going to call this data trees and grasshopper two, uh, basic intro and getting nodes up and running. And that's coming from extending what I was having a lot of fun with as I was digging into what my interests are, calculus. Um, but I do want to have control of what's coming out afterwards and driving geometry. So obviously math is going to be a monster to handle. Data is going to be wild. Text I probably won't get into because of the complications of that and getting into kind of a higher applications of this to robotics and other programs. Uh, but then we're in a very familiar territory again with some new things, which vectors, curves, surfaces, meshes, and transforms and display should be familiar. So you're really back onto the game of what people tell you in Grasshopper 1. Learn 60% of, what well, 90%, if you can figure out 90% of the math sets and vectors, you'd be able to do 60% of anything you'd ever want to do in Grasshopper with that. So yeah, this is where my head's at. We'll call it what it is. It's a simple intro. It's a little chaotic. My scripts are available if you want to get these up and running and plugging them in. But honestly, I would not try and figure this out if you haven't figured out some of the demos that are online, really good ones from Mode Labs. Spend some time looking at data trees in Grasshopper 1, and then you might be able to make the mental shift over to what I think has been organized incredibly well and uh, is available to you to kind of really treat what's happening between items, lists, and lists of lists or data trees a way in which um, if you got into Python, GH Python, or into C Sharp and Grasshopper, you'll start to find that that was pretty essential to scripting as well. And I would say not as complicated. The visual scripting of that is actually taking on a form that seems uh, manageable, at least for me and my small mind. All right. Thanks for watching.